Hello, my name is Ian Patterson. I hold the A.A. Griffith Chair of Structural Materials and Mechanics at the University of Liverpool. I want to talk to you about teaching engineering in context using everyday engineering examples. Based on NSF sponsored research, 10 years of classroom experience and recent online teaching. I spent 20 years at the University of Sheffield in mechanical engineering before moving to Michigan State University in 2004, where I was involved in an NSF grant on enhancing diversity in the undergraduate mechanical engineering population through curriculum change. The PI was Eileen Bush Vishniak at Johns Hopkins University. This graph summarizes the motivation for our original research proposal. Over the 10 years preceding our investigation, absolute numbers and the percentage of women African Americans and Native Americans in engineering programs in the US declined from already low numbers. There were two major outcomes from the research grant, published in the European Journal of Engineering Education. One looked at the content and diversity of mechanical engineering programs in the US. The second, which I want to talk about today, looked at the influence of context on student engagement. We found that engineering education has a language of analogies and idealizations. It's wrong to say that they have no relevance to the subject, but relevance is often only apparent to those well versed in the subject, and by definition students are not, and student motivation is influenced by perceived usefulness of learning. Honey and Mumford proposed that people learn by cycling through a series of learning modes, by having an experience reviewing the experience, then concluding from the experience, and finally planning their next steps. We proposed to guide students round this cycle using everyday engineering examples. We also used the 5E lesson structure developed in the 1960s for teaching science in schools. Engage the student's attention, explore the topic of the lesson, explain the principle underpinning the topic, elaborate an exemplar employing the principle and evaluate understanding acquired by the students. We published a set of booklets each containing about a dozen 5E lesson plans with two or three everyday engineering examples per lesson plan including work solutions aimed at lecturers rather than students. The front covers give you a hint of the types of examples we're talking about. In classes, using everyday engineering examples, significantly more students rated their learning as high or significant than in control classes. There was no significant difference between control classes and no significant correlation of level of difficulty with student understanding or participation. We had a second NSF grant to support dissemination and we provided a series of one-day workshops hosted at the National Academy of Engineering an American Association for the Advancement of Science, as well as broadcasting webinars. There are 70 engineering schools in the USA participating in the program. In 2011, I moved to the University of Liverpool with support from a Royal Society Wolfson Research Merit Award. I continued to present webinars supported by NSF, and then in 2013, with support from the Higher Education Academy, we presented the workshops in Liverpool and in London. This academic year I have tried something completely different. I delivered a massive open online course in thermodynamics in power with our seven and a half credit first year thermodynamics course in Liverpool. I used everyday engineering examples and the 5E structure in both. On video there's a lot more scope to use everyday engineering examples than in the classroom. So for instance, I used my shower to engage the learners and to introduce a little statistical thermodynamics and explain how we can consider the average behaviour of a myriad of atoms. We extended the everyday engineering example concept into experiments set as homework assignments using kitchen equipment. For instance, in one lab we asked learners to measure the efficiency of their kettle. This is the media wall where students could post their results. In another innovation, we developed clear screen technology 
to allow me to talk to the audience while solving a worked example. In this example, I'm calculating the Gibbs energy in the tank of a compressed air powered car in the final week of the MOOC, where we began to transition to more sophisticated examples. We also stretched the students with the fifth E, evaluating their learning. We gave them a recent paper from the journal Science on negative absolute temperatures to read and discuss. Science provided a podcast from the authors, which helped the students, but nevertheless it was challenging for them. 44% of people who registered started the course, which is typical. 27% of the starters finished the course, which is quite high. And 30% of active learners were women, which is good for engineering courses. A comment was posted on average every 7.7 minutes. Participation was global with active learners from at least 33 different countries. Active learners ranged in age from 13 years old to 78 with a correspondingly wide range of qualifications and experience including biologists, historians and some engineers coming back for a refresher. Feedback at the end of the course has been very positive. I think that we have successfully brought an effective pedagogy to online learning that enhances student motivation, understanding and participation in terms of gender, age and culture. Visit my blog for more information and ideas. More than 4,000 people from 117 countries did in the first quarter of this year. You can also find the lesson plans from our NSF project there. Thank you for listening. I'd be happy to answer any questions through the comments section.